Hello, everyone. Happy New Year. My name is Christine, and today I have the privilege of teaching our fast devotion on celebrating your achieved goals. You've learned some very practical steps so far on goal setting and how important it is to write them down. Now, what I'm going to share with you is the importance of the C word, and you guessed it, celebrating. Achieving a goal is a win, and it's worth celebrating. What does it mean to achieve? It means to bring to a successful end or to accomplish, to reach a desired objective, level, or result by effort, skill, or courage. It also means to attain as a result of exertion, which is action, toil, or labor. So it doesn't come easy, but it is worth it. In order to celebrate a win, we need to know what that looks like. You cannot do what you don't define. You have, we have to clearly define our wins, and our wins are our goals that we achieve. This is where writing down our goals comes in. Writing down our goals is the first step of our goal becoming a reality. In Isaiah 30 verse eight, it says, now go write it before them on a tablet and note it on a scroll that it may be for time to come forever and ever. Now in this portion of scripture, Isaiah is prophesying over the people of Judah and he is led in the prophecy to actually state, write it down, that it will come to pass. This is a spiritual principle It's first written before it is materialized. Some practical examples, a building. A building isn't gonna materialize until there's some blueprints written. A marriage, a marriage isn't gonna happen and be officiated until there's some vows and stated and some documents that are signed. A business, a book, a invention, all of those will not be materialized without writing down the vision. If you don't write it down, then it's not a goal. It's a wish. It's a hope. And wishing and hoping just isn't enough. A great theologian once said, many people suffer from a drug called hopium. (laughs) Hoping and wishing without a commitment, putting it on paper, a plan or hard work is what hopium is. And many people suffer from that. And that great theologian was Pastor Marco. Hoping and wishing will make our hearts sick. Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Sick is to be weak, tired, wounded, wore out. It causes a loss of courage to continue, even a loss of joy. So hope deferred makes the heart sick. So it's more than hoping. We we need to write it down. Number three, we will never succeed or prosper without a goal or a plan and hard work. Proverbs 21.5 says, Good planning and hard work leads to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Don't just drift around simply existing and surviving this life. Be intentional. Goal setting sets the course for our lives. It's like having a GPS and putting an address in. Without putting in an address, you have no destination. You're driving without direction. Goal setting sets the course for our lives. Now, how do we celebrate the win? Wins are not just the big goals that we set and achieve. Wins are also accomplishing the steps and the process that gets us there. We must be specific in our goal setting. It's important to list the steps you're going to take in order to achieve your goals. In other words, we must be specific. What are some of the small wins that lead to achieving your goals. Think about that for a second. What are some of the processes or systems that may need to be developed or improved to achieve your goals? Some examples are, let's say that your goal is to grow spiritually this year. 
So what does this look like? This may look like committing to attending a power of 12 or signing up and attending classes for our discipleship growth track. Or this may look like setting apart 30 minutes of your morning to spend time studying the word. And to be even more specific, this may also mean that you download the Bible app and, and a Bible plan reading the Bible for a year. Or you may even go ahead and purchase a daily devotional. Another example of small wins that lead to achieving your goals. If you want to start a new career, what are the steps you're going to take to do that? This may mean you sign up for college courses. You may find an internship. You may make some intentional connections with people that can help you in that journey. Whatever the process is, you need to be specific and you need to be intentional. Before you set goals about what you want to do in this new year, start with who you want to become. Why? Because small disciplines over time will lead to big change. Discipline closes the gap between where, what you want and what you want to achieve. In other words, it's the bridge between who you are and who you want to be. Who do I want to be? Think about that for a second. Who do you want to be as a wife, as a husband, as a, as a son, as a daughter, as a father, as a mother? Who do you want to be as a business owner, as a leader, as a friend? What does that look like? Based on who I want to become, what do I need to do? Ask yourself that question. Some examples might be, I want to be more generous. So this year, I'll set a goal to give a certain amount of offerings this year by a certain date. That's being specific. Maybe another example is I want to be more thankful. So this year, every morning, I'm going to write down a list of five things I'm thankful for. Or maybe I want to be a leader who cares about people. So I may set a goal to write a note of appreciation every day to someone that I lead. Whatever it is that you are setting goals in. Let the who drive the do. Setting our goals from this perspective will help bring some clarity in the process and the steps we need to achieve them. We achieve our goals by focusing on the daily actions that get the results we want. We don't get results by focusing on the results alone. Most people are so focused on the outcome which also can be overwhelming, that they lose sight of the process. Do not devalue the process to success, but instead daily and passionately pursue it. Success is not the result of a few big decisions or steps in your future. Success starts with the small steps that you take today. It's the small things that no one sees that create the results that everyone wants. There's a quote by Greg Rochelle that says, small disciplines done consistently lead to big results over time. What is the process that will lead to this win that we're talking about? Embrace it, celebrate it when it's achieved. Why celebrate the process? Not only will we reap a harvest of achieving our goals, but we also receive the blessing of growth and personal development. Colossians 1.10 says, So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. We grow personally and develop personally, bearing good fruit because we're growing in achieving our goals. So also why celebrate the process? Because by setting clearly defined goals, we can measure and take pride in the achievement of those goals. We'll see forward progress and receive a new self-confidence in the Lord. Hebrews 10, 35 through 36 says, Therefore do not throw away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, 
you may receive what is promised. I love that verse. So my last point is as long as we keep pursuing our goals and don't give up, we will achieve them. Galatians 6, 9 says, And let us not get tired in well-doing, for after a while we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get get discouraged and give up. After the goal is accomplished, there is a prize that's worth celebrating. A promotion, a financial increase, your next level, greater influence, spiritual and personal development and maturity, joy, satisfaction, and lives impacted by yours, and the list goes on. That's a great price to celebrate. The greatest price for me is the person that I become in the process of achieving the goals that God has given me. The prize is not getting the thing for, for me. It's actually my relationship with God. And the person that he develops me into with every vision that he's given me to accomplish with his help. So let me close with this. Remember, take the time to enjoy the satisfaction of achieving your goals. When we can clearly define our wins, we can measure our success and have something to celebrate. What are your wins? Take a moment, recognize them. This is a great life. Enjoy and celebrate the wins. Celebrate when you achieve something, no matter how small. And take the time to slow down and enjoy it.